So now we're back with Scott Shelby, and I just paused the game a moment to catch my breath because, oh my God, intense stuff is happening. Uh, Madison and Norman Jaden both have a lead on the same guy who's named Paco who works at the Blue Lagoon, or maybe he owns the Blue Lagoon. And um, it's really credibly looking like Paco might either be the origami killer or be like closely associated with the origami killer because that doctor who told um, Madison about Paco, like, only told her about him. Like, at first he refused to give any information, and then he told her about him when he thought that uh, she was going to die, just so she could know the truth before he, like, took a drill to her head and then uh, did God knows what with her corpse. So that's a really, really credible lead, in my opinion. And uh, so far, really, none of these lead characters, other than Madison and Ethan, have even run into each other. Scott has his own story with Lauren, and then Norman Jaden, well, I guess Norman Jaden did run into Ethan because he helped Ethan escape, but, um, I was expecting Jaden and, uh, Shelby to run into each other, or, um, like Madison and Jaden, and, uh, for there to be some collision there where they actually exchanged notes on their investigation, and so far, that has not happened, but, uh, yeah, we still have Gordy Kramer as a suspect, and now we have this guy Paco, who we don't really know anything about. And, uh, we still have, uh, Fat Man Scott Shelby as a suspect. Although, um, he seemed like a more prominent suspect, honestly, about two hours of gameplay ago, because, uh, a lot of wrinkles have, uh, happened since then that have, uh, cast suspicion on other suspects. And, uh, Poor Ethan Myers could really have a split personality disorder and could really uh, have a second personality which takes over whenever he blacks out and uh, causes him to do horrible things that he can't remember when he wakes up. And he could be discovering that the killer is right in the mirror. So hopefully there are no dramatic scenes involving looking in bathroom mirrors anytime soon. Hopefully everything will uh, come to a nice peaceful conclusion. It'll all be a misunderstanding. It'll turn out that the eight supposed victims weren't really dead, and uh, the eight bodies were actually of their evil twins, and uh, their mothers all made a compact, because they were all mothers of twins, to uh, kill the evil child and spare the good child, and um, they're all safe, safely in witness protection right now in British Columbia. I don't think that's going to be the end of the story, but uh, one can only hope. That's still sort of morbid, right? Like, eight mothers giving birth to, like, twins and then, like, keeping the entire life of one of them a secret until murdering... So, you think no, that, that's a very, very bad explanation. That makes sense. Didn't want him spilling his guts to us. And you suspect Gordy Kramer, right? Oh, him or one of his men. Gordy has the time and the means not to mention the fucked up attitude to go along with it. He's only a suspect, but he's a pretty guilty looking one. Are these your files on the case? Yeah, I've been working on them for a couple of years. I uh, built up a mountain of paperwork. Magazines about origami? You think the killer could have subscribed to one of those? If he was even remotely interested in origami in the last 30 years, his name may be in there somewhere. The trouble is, there's over 500 names against a squat. I'm starving. Do you have anything to eat? Well, I'm no chef, but I should be able to make some scrambled eggs if you like. Great. I'm soaking wet. I need to warm up a little. Is we'll take a, shower. take a shower. <laughs> I read her mind. Go to my bedroom. It's the next door. Every single character oh, in this game seems to have a shower scene. Is this like a time trial where I have to hurry up and cook some eggs? Or do I have time to look around? I don't want to sit down in the chair. I actually wanted to look in my file cabinet, but yeah, I guess I could see whether there's anything new in my drawers while I'm here. I have no thoughts and the shower is running. The controls in this game are a little wonky. Sometimes they don't really do what you intend the character to do. That R1 with Jaden where I shot the suspect, I'm still angry about that. I'm still angry about failing the part where we used to crawl through the glass because 
I would have at least had three out of four trials complete if I'd succeeded on that one. I've got eggs, I've got a plate. Don't even cook them, just put them raw right there on the plate. Be like, here's your fucking omelet. That's good, he pulls a pan right out of the drying rack. To make an omelet, you gotta crack some eggs. It sounds so sinister when you say it like that, but he just means it literally. He really always just wanted to be a chef. The thing about police work that he got involved in, that was just, you know, to pay the bills. He sits at home all day and watches Iron Chef in his spare time. Maybe he never was a cop, he just bought like replicas of a police badge and like uh, that guy, uh, Lieutenant Blake down at the precinct just humors him by pretending that he was a cop because uh, Lieutenant Blake used to know his mom and his mom uh, was a really nice lady who lives down the street and uh, he promised never to like disillusion her delusional son. I took the liberty of borrowing your bathroom. Looks better on you. Well, I made an omelet just in time if there was a like time trial. Maybe I should have told you. eggs? Oh, I didn't cook them. Sorry. I told you. I'm not a great chef. It's okay. What's that? The notebook I took from Manfred's place. According to this, about 30 clients bought spare parts for royal machines in the last 10 years. The killer may be one of them. Oh, you know, checking out the alibi of 30 clients one by one. That's a lot of legwork. Except that if we cross-check them with the list. The list of subscribers to Origami magazines. You still got that, right? Yeah, yeah. Lord, wait. Where did he ever find a list of subscribers to Origami magazines? I don't remember him ever mentioning that once. Maybe that was in one of the if alternate the dialogue really options that I didn't choose. A royal typewriter, and if he subscribed to an origami magazine, his name should be on both lists. Well, what were the, uh, I mean, that's just an assumption, but yeah, I suppose. His name is here somewhere. Help me, we're gonna find him. Maybe I should get Lauren some McDonald's. She's probably still hungry. We didn't get to see Lauren's shower scene. We stayed in a Scott Shelby's point of view the entire time. Well, they're hard at work on that. His name was on both lists. Died when he was ten. What are you gonna do now? Pick up his car and make sure he's dead? I know it doesn't. We're walking through a graveyard to check out a dead guy. We have enough suspects already, we don't need to be looking for a dead one. Who's this lady visiting? She's visiting her dear sister, whose name was Tina Miller. Uh, excuse me, I'm looking for her. Well, don't worry about it. Why would that lady know where John Shepard was buried? Excuse me. I'm looking for the grave of a young boy who died about 30 years ago. His name was John Shepard. You wouldn't know where it is by any chance. The children's graves are in the next plot. Thanks. The next plot. So is that this plot or is that a different plot? Because I'm in the next plot. Arthur Hall, Sherry Coleman, J. 
Jim Williams. These are children's graves. He was only 11 years old when he died. Jill Collins, died in 59, wrote The Hunger Games. Tom Taylor, died in 32, made awesome guitars. Connie Evans, these are all like Irish sounding names. Timmy and Connie, Johnny Shepard. Frederick Lee. Avid abolitionist, helped organize the Underground Railroad. Ellen Moore, wrote, wrote, wrote Utopia. Jeffrey Thomas, served on the U.S. Supreme Court. Catherine Scott, famed Arctic, Arctic explorer. Ellen Campbell, she came, hooray, hooray. That's what it should write on the, uh, that's what the epitaph on that headstone should be. She came, hooray, hooray. Children plot. Not children's plot, because they were out of apostrophes at the engraver. I found it! I was right there, come on. Did I get teleported there because she found it first? These women today are too smart. You can't keep up with them. John Shepard, rest in peace. 1967 to 1977. These flowers are fresh. Looks like someone's still tending the grave. Origami figures. That's one hell of a coincidence. That's the dog. That's the same one that uh, Ethan makes. So is this October of 73, or 83, or whatever year um, John Shepard died? Whoever made this game has a thing for drunken Irishmen. Or maybe just people with Irish names. Oh, this is fun. I'm playing in like an abandoned construction site. My brother. Oh, I need a tampax instead of holding it to push myself up. It's not that hard, come on. You can't weigh too much. Plus you're an experienced rapscallion. I don't think these kids would have that much time trouble climbing up this thing because kids are monkeys. I was a monkey when I was a kid. I might have been a whole barrel of monkeys. What are you doing now, Brother Johnny? Or maybe I'm Johnny. Carefully. He made a Tarzan scream as he did that. Move your ass! Can I crawl through the pipe? Watch your head. Oh, I need to keep holding down in an L1R1. Probably I'm gonna bump my head if I let go of down. My brother is more uh, athletic than I am, and he's not gonna let me forget it for a moment. 
do what? All right, get a running start, whatever we're gonna do. Vault up. That was easy. Could you go around here? Up these stairs, maybe? My dialogue loops a lot. They could have recorded some more dialogue for this kid. Instead of just having it loop. Now I have to shimmy across the beam. This could be dangerous. Kids really do do stuff like this in America. I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world, but... This is a pretty realistic portrayal of what to do when your dad kicks you out of the house. See back here? Yeah, that's where he is. Get along, little doggies. My slide. What did I land in? Just a mound of dirt? Don't have to do this. It's too hard for you. No chance. I can do it all right. Just watch. It's way harder to shimmy across that beam than to climb up this. All you have to do is climb straight up. Whoa. He's slipping. Now we have to balance on the plank. Just balance very carefully. Yeah, yeah, we have to keep the controller centered. I was doing perfect there. Why does he keep staggering? I'm keeping it perfectly balanced. I'm tilting it to compensate for whenever he sways his arms, but... The game is very picky about this. Come on, it's your turn. Now I have to make a death defying leap. R1? Oh, okay, he walks up to the edge and then he reels back. That was a really long jump. There's no way I would have ever tried that. Now there's the jump of death, and it might really be the jump of death. Because somebody is probably going to die today. Where's the prompt? R1. Triangle. L2. L1. Circle. I'm holding five buttons right now, ready for the jump of death. Here we go. <laughs> he made it onto the dirt. Nobody died. jump on him. Oh, 
trouble? If you survive the jump of death, how can you be in trouble now? Oh, Scott, that's John's voice. John is his brother. He's gonna drown in water. Oh my god, I'm surviving, I mean I'm doing it, it's just not, it's turning red. There's no way this kid is gonna survive. You are doomed, Johnny. What would you like your last words to be? What are we going to do is not good for your last words. I think the water's rising. I'm hurrying. I'll be right back. Okay, I think the water's rising. It's going to be painted on your headstone. The poor kid never did find any help. His brother drowned. I put a ring The boy that lived, what happened to him? Well, all as I know is he got separated from his parents. Of course he got adopted, so it could be anyone. Well, looks like the storm's coming. I guess I better be getting home. Okay, so now we know 100% for sure, absolute certain, that the origami killer John is Shepherd John Shepard's brother. There's no way that the origami killer is anyone he other than John Shepard's brother. He could be the origami but, killer. But um, he might have changed his name. Come on. Get back in the car. The origami killer places his victims in a tank that will eventually fill with rainwater to recreate the way that his brother died when he was like an 11 year old kid. And he gives the fathers a mission to save the child who's in danger because his own father was too drunk to save his brother when his brother was uh, in need of help. That is the story. That's the only explanation. What's the matter? That matter. Yeah? He told his grave. What is he doing? To put in flowers. John Shepard's grave. So, Charles Kramer, this rich construction tycoon, adopted the brother of John Shepard and raised him as his own son to be a spoiled rich brat. And he changed his name to Gordy Kramer. I don't think so. Gordy Kramer looks too young to be John Shepard because uh, John Shepard would have been like 40 years old at least by the time this game this game came out in 2010, and it appears to be set in 2010, based on the age of the other characters. And, um, Gordy Kramer looks like he's maybe 30 years old, maybe 35 at the most. He's not like 40, 45 in that range. And John Shepard died in like either 63 or 73, maybe he died in 73. But he was like 11 years old. Paco could not be the killer. There's no way that um, a guy named John Shepard could have credibly changed his name to Paco unless he underwent massive, you know, like surgery to change his uh, ethnic features. Irish Mexicans. It's a long shot. Oh, 